Um, our talk is on uh, developer best practices. So basically what we're going to do is, is take you through a quick tour of, of best practices around account setup, um, just setting up your, your site ID, setting up your account, giving us a, a, as much uh, sort of information to, to help monetize you guys as much as possible. Uh, ad placement when you're placing ads, where to place them, how should they look, this kind of stuff, and then working with support if there are any problems. So in general, when you, when you set up your account, um, you know, help us help you. We are, are actually looking at the information that you provide us in terms of your site name, in terms of uh, your app store URL, your site description. So you know, don't sort of treat it like it's, it's the information is only facing you, or you know, don't, don't sort of name it as you would your, your Gmail account. Uh, name it with the, the fact in mind that we're actually looking at this and, and trying to sort of place you in the right buckets in the right categories. So for instance, you know, when you're naming your site, you might want to do it in this sort of uh, syntax by giving us your, your, uh, the name of your app, which would match the app store. So if our marketing or sales teams are, are looking to put you in a bundle, they can easily see that, that you're actually on the app store and sort of see screenshots and things like that. Um, where exactly uh, your ad is being shown on your, your app, if you have multiple pages of your app, if you have a menu page and then you have a gameplay and then a, a leaderboard, then split those up and let us know exactly which uh, site ID matches up to, to which page. And then if you're putting it on a different location in the page, uh, do this as well. So just be as specific as possible but it, because it actually helps us to, to find your app and put you in more bundles. Um, along, along with this, uh, site descriptions and, and category selections. Um, again, just, just please sort of fill this out so that we can actually uh, hear you sort of describe your app. Nobody can sell your app as, as well as you can. So just, just be as forthcoming as you can with that, that information. Um, also, it, it makes sense, I sort of alluded to this, is to create different site IDs for different sections of your app. Uh, this helps you to, to sort of split up your inventory and see what's performing well. Uh, like, like we sort of talked about, we're giving you more server-side control over your app. Um, so this allows you to sort of test different things. If you wanted to test different sort of color formats or, or different refresh rates on different places in your app, then you could do this. Um, so now sort of talking about ad placement, do's and don'ts. Um, ad placement is, is, as we learn, more, more sort of an art than a science. There's no hard and fast rules like these types of apps should absolutely not have uh, ads here or there for the most part. Um, in general, what we say is don't fight the, the user flow of your application. Obviously, we all want to make money, uh, but it doesn't help us to just shove ads down users' throats, especially if we're making money on clicks. We have to, we have to sort of think about performance. It's not good for us, it's not good for you, it's not good for the advertisers, and obviously the users don't like this as well. So let's, let's put ads where they belong and sort of not just push up them everywhere. Um, just a, a general sort of thought around this is avoid pushing ads when a user has a decisive next action that they're going to take. If you have a video uh, application and a user is, is thinking about clicking on a, on a soccer video and he, he's got that next action in mind, then then it, it doesn't sort of make sense to just put an, put an ad there because he's not likely to click on it. And he might actually regard it as spammy. Um, uh, an example of this um, is, is Paper Toss. So Paper Toss, I think, did, did a really smart thing by taking the menu page of their app. So this is the first page that somebody sees when they're looking to play Paper Toss. They actually use this inventory uh, for house ads and not actually to show uh, a paid ad, which, which makes sense because their users come back pretty often. This might be a good place to just sort of show off what else is in their, their, uh, their repertoire rather than, than trying to make money off of this, this spot. So inventory is always useful for something. It may not be, always be useful for, for a paid ad. Um, here's an example. So this is a video ad. It's uh, Truvio, uh, which is a, a video uh, app. Um, they also did, did a good job of, of ad placement here. So they have their, their sort of scrolling featured video section here. You notice they didn't put an ad there. Users are, are looking to find content. They're, they're not sort of in an open frame of mind. Um, once a user clicks on an ad, obviously the ad is loading. You know, they, could, they could have put an ad there, but they decided not to. Finally, after users see an ad, they're placing an ad at the bottom. Um, and actually in this case, it's, it's a very engaging ad. The user's open for it. They haven't been sort of shoved ads for the past two or three screens. And we actually see about a 3x uh, sort of increase on click-through rates on pages like these versus pages like these. So it makes a lot of difference. Um, another best practice is when you show an ad, stay as visible as possible with that ad. Um, you know, although it, it may seem alluring to, to sort of uh, adjust the, 
the background of, the, of, a, of a CPC ad to, to match your, your app uh, identically, um, that may not be the, the, the best thing to do because you, you want the ad to pop. You want use it, when you're showing an ad, you want users to be able to see where an ad ends, where the page begins, and, and make it as apparent as possible. So use alternating colors. Sort of think about this as, as, a, as a good way to, to make the ad pop. Um, Paper Toss does a good example of this. It's, it's up there. It's, it's not uh, sort of where users might click uh, inadvertently on the bottom, uh, and, the, and the, ad, the ad really pops. Uh, additionally, for, for scrolling apps, um, begin the ad call as, as fast as you can in advance of the regular page content, because you want users to be able to see the, the ad while they're still over here in this, this, this frame. If they start scrolling already and the ad shows up there, obviously they're not going to click on it. You're not going to make money. We're not going to make money. Um, and it's, it's just not, not good practice. Um, so where would you put the ad? You, you would put the ad maybe on the frame so it stays there, or if it scrolls with the content. But you know, sort of generally just, just put it in places where users are able to easily see it once you've made your decision to actually show an ad. Uh, next, I'm going to actually pass it along to, to Alex, uh, who's going to talk about the best ways to work with support. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much. Um, so um, I manage the support team. And uh, the support team does two things. Uh, the first thing is that we actually answer all the inquiries that we get from you guys. We're also in charge of enforcing all of our policies. Um, so a lot of what I'll talk about actually echoes what Anand's talked about. But um, I'll go into further depth into more on the policy side also. Um, to begin with, I know that um, a lot of folks sometimes get our email address and they tend to email us directly. And that's actually not the most efficient way of getting in contact to, with support. We have a Contact Us page, and in the Contact Us page, uh, we ask for several things in there, including, you know, what's the query about? And this actually helps us do a better job of figuring out what the issue is a lot quicker and helps us answer the questions a lot faster. So our preference is if you could use the Contact AdMob page, um, we will get back to you a lot faster than if you just email us directly with the email address you might have had before. So in terms of streamlining support inquiries, and I know this is something that um, we hear a lot. It's like, how do we, can we get a response faster? And I'm trying to give some tips here. Um, use the email associated with your account. It seems simple, um, but so often we get an email and we actually don't have an account associated with it. So we actually have to go digging through all of our systems to see if the email address that we got the inquiry from matches anything that we've had before. Um, that takes a lot of time and actually slows things down significantly. Um, so using the email is probably one of the biggest things that you can do. Um, secondly, um, be as detailed as possible. And I have some examples here. Um, include your site ID. Um, crash logs or code, all, always very helpful if you're going to debug something. Um, if the issue involves a site access, then um, what browser are you using? Something that simple actually helps us speed things along a lot faster. And finally, indicating what kind of SDK. Um, now, one of the things that we also like to see is sample files or URLs that again helps us go back and try to debug the issue. Um, my team does both the advertiser and the publisher um, issues, and I can tell you that normally it takes about three to four times longer to actually debug things on the publisher app side, um, in part because sometimes we have to recreate the issue. And we're not sure if it's something on our side or something on your side. Now, um, some guidelines, and I think this echoes what Anand was talking about. Um, from a policy enforcement standpoint, um, we usually get complaints if we see users having to click on things accidentally. Um, and so that not only creates a bad user experience, but then forces us to go in and throttle your app or your site. So what we do look at when we allocate fill is where the ad placement is. So examples of things that you probably want to stay away from is if an ad is too close to the buttons. And so a user might actually try to interact with the game, but instead click on the ad itself. Um, if it's covering one of the touchable areas. And then as somebody on my team mocked up, if, for example, um, it actually looks exactly like the game itself, people might actually click on it by mistake. So these are just very common examples um, that people mistakenly do that might drive up some CTR, but actually will hurt your app in the long term. And here's a few reasons why. Um, errant clicks tend to hurt you two main reasons. One is that we do throttle your fill rate if we see that it's a bad implementation, um, in part because of the user experience, but in part because of the conversion. Um, we have a delicate balance between advertisers and publishers, and we want to keep both sides happy. And then secondly, it does create a bad user experience. 
So we often get questions from not actually publishers or advertisers, but from users who see an AdMob ad, and they click on it by mistake and believe that it's AdMob that um, created that implementation. So um, some tips for success. And I think that this has been echoed a little bit uh, before, and you'll probably hear it more during the day. But um, request ads dynamically. Um, that allows us to optimize our ad serving. Um, so prefetching it or caching sometimes can hurt the efficiency. The, ref the ad refresh rate, 60 seconds or less. Um, we found from the support side that 60 seconds tends to optimize revenue. And then finally, send clicks to AdMob directly. Um, mechanisms that catch ads and clicks for tracking purposes can sometimes malfunction. So um, the other thing that we do often try and do is we try and scale support as quickly as possible. And that often means giving you the resources to answer your own questions. And so I'll go through some of the various resources that we, even at AdMob ourselves, utilize. But it's something that's very helpful. Um, the first one is our Help Center. There you'll find things like the Publisher Starter Kit, you know, how to use house ads, adding code to a new site. It's just chock full of great information. And for example, for uh, Shark Week, what we've done is we've put up some of the topics for the things that have been launched this week. And I know this might be hard to see, but if you actually just go to our help page, you'll be able to see it. And it's at helpcenter.admob.com. And so all, everything that's launching this week, you'll actually see links to a lot of that information directly from our help center. Um, we have developer resources. So we have a developer wiki for technical documentation. Um, it's very useful. Um, once you start getting digging into our SDKs and a lot of the other information, you could go in here and you'll see a lot of the implementation guidelines. And that's located at developer.admob.com slash wiki slash main page, main underscore page. Finally, uh, we have the Google Groups. And this is a resource where other folks like you actually go in and answer each other's questions. And so you can post a question there. We also monitor the boards. So if there's actually a question that doesn't look like it can be answered, or if it's something that we should look at, we actually go in and respond. But the, for the most part, this helps you actually help other people in the community. And so it's actually a very useful site. And it's in the Google Groups. But I know that there's probably a lot of questions, so we want to actually <laughs> go ahead and respond to those. Yes? Is it a good idea to, for a big app to put the ads in the loading frame, like at the user's room, the <coughs> application to load? So the question. Scaling at a skinny will is a skinny will, but you could also present an ad. So the question is, is it a good idea for the ad to prefetch the um, and for the app to prefetch the ad as it's still loading. Uh, I think he's asking if, if the loading page is a good place to, to yeah, put the ad. The okay. page. I think that's something, you know, it, it, like these things, are, explored it. these things are sort of unique in, uh, for different apps and different applications. For big apps, well, you know, no, it requires some time to load. Yeah, it, it, it could be. You might want to just, just test that. I, I think it's, it's a very sensible place to put house ads. Um, there'll be a, another session that, that's about house ads exactly, but uh, I think it's a great place to, to, to test click through rate and performance and, and, and try it out. I mean, it's unique to each app, so we don't have sort of, uh, sort of blanket uh, advice to give you on, on that particular page. Especially if it has a nice graphic. It's very subtle, but yeah. it's up to an ad. So users could, you know, if they like it, they could click on it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, when you get back to your applications, it's already loaded. That's true. I, I think it's definitely something you should test. And splitting up, splitting up your site IDs would give you the opportunity to see the performance of one page versus the other and, and where might be good places to put certain types of, of ads. Any other questions? We have a quiet audience today. Oh. How big, how many impressions would one have to be making for an application to be visible to your sales team for pitching to advertisers a particular app or a particular package or something? It's a great question for Anand. <laughs> yeah, so, so this question, uh, I, I think, is something that, that developers ask that's pretty, pretty frequently. Um, there's, it's largely sales-driven, right? So if you are, uh, if you have content that is particularly interesting for a, a demographic that our sales team is, is looking for, or let's say, for instance, it's seasonal, 
um, then that might go in a bundle. We actively look into our network for sites big and small that are sort of specific to content that we want to run ads on. Um, so that part is, is sort of there. In terms of, in terms of size, um, you know, it's, I, I'd say it's less of a, of a size issue and more of a, of a quality issue and the type of content that, that you, you've got. Uh, we don't, for the most part, sell sites, sites specifically. Uh, so in terms of getting sales exposure, it, it's more about what type of app or type of site you actually have. Can you tell us anything about which categories um, you know, have high click-through rate versus low or high, uh, you know, the advertisers pay a higher rate or like that? So there's, there's not sort of specific information, sort of this category does extremely well, this category does, does not. Um, it's, it's very much sort of driven by, by the actual application itself, by some of the ways that people uh, integrate ads into it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, sorry, I couldn't, couldn't really. I can say one thing though, yeah. my team and uh, Anand's team work very closely to identify sites that could utilize um, sales help. Um, and if we have, for example, a lot of advertisers are looking for particular types of sites, we actually work together to put site bundles together to actually be able to target different apps or sites. So it's something that we're constantly monitoring because it's in our best interest to make sure that we get ads to the right apps and the right sites. Um, so we work very closely from that perspective. In the back. Sure. Um, the question is, if a site um, has bad implementation, how do we throttle it? And is that done in an automated way? Um, and is there a formula? Uh, so, uh, it, it, more than just in, in case of bad performance, but in case of are there other situations in which you throttle up or down the flow of ads to a site? Um, I think the two main ones that we see is implementation, or if we have a case of potential click fraud. Uh, that's something that we also monitor very closely. And so we do have some automated measures uh, that we look at that when the trigger is met, uh, that we think might be bad implementation or it might be fraud, that we actually go in and it gets flagged for my team to look at. Um, the throttling itself is sometimes just based on uh, the review. And so if we believe that it is a case of either of those scenarios, we will usually contact the publisher or the app developer and let them know, um, and then do a throttling. Um, if it's a particularly egregious example of something, we could actually turn off the site and, and communicate them that until it gets fixed, we won't um, turn the ads back onto them. Um, there are situations where we have started to look at sites that perform very well from a CTR perspective. And it's not necessarily throttle them up, but they may be sold more um, from the sales side um, or highlighted uh, because of the, how well they're performing. That's, that should be, it's, it's automated as well. Our, our ad serving technology sort of picks up on you know, where, where could the network make the most money? And obviously that benefits you if you have a, have a high click-through rate and, and it's, it's a legitimate legitimately high click-through rate, the post-click conversion is, is good. That's, that's an excellent scenario and, and we'll, we'll definitely you know, pick up on that both manually and also in an automated fashion. We're very excited about those <laughs> cases. <Very. laughs> Anything else?